Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you configure Redis inside WordPress so that it caches the objects in Redis uh, server. Now, um, again, this video is part of a tutorial set that covers the entire workflow of creating different apps using Zoom Admin um, and installing WordPress. So for more initial videos, we installed MySQL, we uh, installed PHP My Admin, Redis Client, Redis Server. We installed two WordPress sites. And now in this video, I'll, I'll show you how you configure now that we have Redis running. And by the way, our Redis client is a web-based client, you know, so you could see it's uh, Redis objects. And I was testing with this uh, beforehand, so there's an object here left, but I'm gonna delete this. So, so first thing you need to do um, is install a couple of plugins. So let's go into our WordPress admin here um, and just add new, um, just search for Redis and just install the Redis object cache. Again, this is the most popular plugin. You could use something else, probably W2 has, uh, W3 total cache has an option as well, but might be paid or something, I'm not sure. So we're gonna, we're gonna use this option here. Um, it's not the most intuitive option, but I think it's it's free and it works pretty great. So let's install this um, and activate. The other plugin I'm going to install is called Query uh, Monitor. I'm going to do Add New. And this is helpful to kind of see, again, this is kind of admin based plugin for developers or just people who want to see some admin level stuff. And it kind of shows you the object cache details as well. That's why when I install this, it'll be easier for us to um, kind of look at look at it another way as well. Uh, so now we have both of these plugins installed. This is the query monitor one, and if you just click on queries or object cache, uh, for right now there's nothing here. It says object cache um, is not installed. If you do here overview, you'll see that uh, object cache is not available. So if we now if we go back to our plugins page and then click on settings of Redis object cache plugin, you'll see that it's disabled by default. And if we enable it now, you know it says it can't connect, right? Because the by default it looks for a default connection, and our connection is a bit different because we installed it in a container. Um, again, even in your case, it, it might not connect by default. So you actually have to give it a bit of a configuration. So there's um, a couple ways to do that, but the easiest way is to go ahead and uh, open your WP config uh, PHP file. Now, um, from our tutorial set, one of the tutorials covers how you connect your Visual Studio Code with uh, your server so that you can go in and find your application files and edit. Again, even if you're not using Zoom Admin, in your case, if WordPress is installed somewhere else, you might have SFTP connection, it should work for you as well. So you can watch that tutorial to learn how you connect your server to um, uh, Visual Studio Code. And Visual Studio Code is a free editor made by Microsoft, so it's, it's a good tool. So in our case, this is a WP1 application here. And if we go under app, you'll see all the files. You find WP config. By the way, you'll see uh, the database configuration here as well. The, the same one that you entered when you were installing, installing um, WordPress. So we're just gonna open up some space here. And it's important to, again, because you're editing code now, it's important to follow exact instructions up, otherwise your entire site uh, might go down if you make a mistake here, so be careful. Um, so, and I'm gonna have this copied in the description of the video, so it'll make it easier for you. So we need to uh, define a few different things here. It's basically four keys we need to provide or so. So number one, 
it's like a salt key, which basically means if we go back to our Redis object, um, Redis commander here to kind of see our Redis keys, you saw how ours, you know, started with top drops. That's kind of what this does. It kind of gives the, uh, you know, key uh, a name so you can kind of find if you, you are using Redis for other sites as well. You know, and you only have one Redis server. This is a way to kind of distinguish between them by easily by looking at the name, right? So we know that this site is for um, topdrops.com, but instead of that, I like just using dashes. It just is is better way to do it in Linux. So topdrops.com, and also uh, I like ending with another uh, dash here, and it's because you know WordPress adds a uh, another key on top of this as well so I want my domain to be clear and then I think at the, at the end it'll put WP as well so that's that's all we need to do for the first one here the second one we need to change and this is again this is the host of the Redis right where where the Redis is installed and sometimes you might have Redis installed in a different server in which case you need to provide the public IP and, and key and uh, port number um, and I've shown I've shown that to you as well in the past, like in the in the case of PHP admin, how we used the public IP call and the port number to access. It. This is the same thing. If if you if you install Redis on another server, that's what you want to do. Use the public IP. Uh, in our case, Redis runs on the same server, so server one, same as our WP one. So we know it can access the by just the host name. In that case, container name is, is the host name inside inside that, that server. So we just say Redis one. That's the op name you have, okay? And because you're giving it the op name, the default port works fine. If you had used the public IP, um, then you, you have to use uh, the the full uh, 30,000 30, port number, the public port number. Uh, that's assigned to each application. Again, easiest way to find out is if you go just read this one here. You see the port, this is 3005. This is the public, uh, you know, port number, and this is the public IP. So that's that's how you can easily find. If you are again, you only do that if you're not running it on the same server. Uh, in our case, we are running it on the same server, so I'm gonna leave the default port. And finally, password. Again, I've showed when installing Redis, by default there's no password, but we actually configured a password because it's it's safer so we actually need to provide the password of uh, redis uh, server the one we configured and this is the one i configured uh, and then just control s to save it okay that's all you have to do and again if you don't want to use visual studio code you can Use some other means, you know, uh, file Zilla or something else to edit, edit your WP config file. But this is kind of a global, and it has to do with the Redis uh, object cache plugin. So it's not something that Zoom admin, it's not related related to Zoom admin. So even if you're not using Zoom admin, this this still is the same way you do it. Now, uh, if we go back to our WordPress here, refresh this page. It should now say it's connected. See, so you said you know you have the status connected now, and that's what you want to see. Um, if you again, if you type the correct stuff in there, including the password, you should see connected. Now that our uh, our Redis is, is configured in WordPress, you know if you look at Query um, Object Cache, here, you'll see that it's it's now hitting the Object Cache. Uh, and by the way, if you if you don't know, you're not sure what what this is really doing. It's basically limiting number of queries sent to the database server. So in a way, you're taking the load off of your MySQL database, and and because a lot of the stuff doesn't change in, in WordPress, Redis is able to cache it in its in, in its server. It's it's much faster way to load the page than going back to um, the to the I think this is from a uh, older key here I have I might have to delete this one so this is the new one we configured 
and, and you can see if you wanted to kind of play and see what what it's saving you know all the stuff that that's basically getting from database now it's getting from the redis uh, object server hence it will speed up your site especially when you have a lot of load on the on your server and and mysql is not is not the greatest way to process a lot of load on the server if you hit too many if you open too many connections to mysql it, it might it might, it might uh, take it down so depending on your configuration but so this is a great way to kind of uh, help out with the load of your site by adding a redis cache um, and again now if you go back to your site again you're not gonna see anything different uh, the only time you might see something different is, let's say you're saving some, changing something, some content, if you're not seeing the update on the website, it's because it's pulling it from the cache, in which case you might have to go back here and just say flash cache, and this way it, it clears out all the content in here. If I refresh this again, um, again it's basically re-pulling everything from the MySQL server. So that's how you configure Redis inside WordPress. And again, if you use Zoom Admin, it just makes things a lot easier to install different apps on your VPS server. And again, our, this tutorial set covers the entire you know, steps of creating a server in DigitalOcean, configuring, you know, connecting it with Zoom Admin, uh, you know, deploying these apps. Uh, by the way, we'll, we'll cover deploying other apps in another video but just quickly I deployed PHP app here um, by the way we have, the, we have a default template when you create an app and deploy it using one of the platforms like php.net core or, or you know node.js something else in each of those cases I've created a uh, we basically created a template that's one page website which you could kind of change and it's a good enough website, I think, if you're not trying to go crazy and create a custom design, you can quickly create websites in whichever technology you prefer, right? And that's, we've done uh, the work behind the scenes. When we deploy this, it actually, in the background, it uses, it uses whatever technology, like in this case, PHP. In this case, it's ASP.NET Core, you know, that basically runs this website. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'll cover more in depth on those in another video, but uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next section.